Hey guys, Jeff Lemieux here with Matt Polster. We're turning the page on the 2022 season. We're looking ahead to 2023. And Matt, you know, with that said, I'm sure as frustrating as the 2022 season was, there's always something that you want to be able to pull out of those types of experiences. So as this group is going to be coming back together in 2023, looking to be a stronger group, looking to be a better team, what is it that you feel like this group maybe can pull away from the experiences of 2022 that can make this group stronger? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, obviously, like you said, was frustrating, but the biggest thing was that with, you know, dealing with a lot of adversity, maybe not having a full squad at times, missing key players um, was part of the struggles that we had that year. But I think with the players that we did have, we were able to still stay in contention for playoffs and keep it close. And it was still kind of in our hands towards the end. So um, we don't really have ourselves to blame, but I think the uh, ability to dig deep and just like push through certain times, um, I thought that's probably the only thing we could take out of that season. And you've kind of experienced both ends of the spectrum, right? You've spent a long time in Major League Soccer in two different stints, the Revs in Chicago. You've had seasons where you've won the Supporter Shield. You've had seasons where you've missed the playoffs, kind of experienced everything in between. So when you have a season like this where the expectations were really high and obviously didn't reach those expectations, does that create a little bit of an extra edge coming into that next season with a group of guys that's saying, we got a little bit of something to prove? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the motivation, there shouldn't be much motivation. It's already been motivated for us now. Um, having missed the playoffs, I think a lot of guys, and I'm hoping the entire locker room feels the same where, you know, that's obviously not good enough for me individually and I think it's the team and I don't, I think I probably can speak for the group in saying that, you know, the, all the boys are probably motivated to go next year and, and make playoffs. On a personal level, you did sign a contract extension in August of this year, so your future is secured in New England. And when you think back to, to 2020 and you made that decision to leave Europe, to leave Rangers, come back to the United States, come to MLS, and join the Revs. That's a major career decision. It was also a major life decision. So now two and a half years later, as you kind of look back on that, how satisfied are you with that decision that you made at that point in your career? Yeah, I'm extremely pleased with it because it was a difficult decision. I didn't want to leave. I've told people that, but I think for me, I wanted to play more games and be a key piece within a team. And in this place, I thought I would suit very well. And I think it's played out quite well so far. So hope, you know, I have two more guaranteed years now and um, hopefully it's, I can stay longer. And off the field, you're raising a daughter here now too. I know you've only been here for two and a half years, but how much, how quickly has New England kind of become home for you, for you and your family? Yeah, uh, we love it here. Um, the little one's growing up quickly. She's walking already, but you know, um, we're enjoying it a lot. I think there's a lot to, to see here. You can, I mean, jumping state to state, it's nice to see different scenery. So um, we love her. We love it in New England. We love it in Boston. You've been giving Carlos all of the tips on, uh, on having a newborn? Uh, yeah, it's, it's the biggest one is you don't get to sleep very much. With, obviously, the little one, what does the offseason look like for you? Yeah, we're bouncing around a little bit, but, you know, we go back home to see our parents as much as we can. They obviously don't get to see the little one that much, so the key is for us to see our grandparents um, as much as possible, or my parents, her grandparents. Um, so that's, that's the key, is just to see family. And you should have a little bit of time this offseason to relax with the World Cup a little bit. You looking forward to the World Cup? Yeah, it's a long offseason, not looking forward to that, um, but the World Cup itself is, in, is incredible. It's nice that we're finally back in it um, and being able to support our country. Are you kind of a, are you an avid World Cup watcher in terms of you watch like every minute of every game? Are you a little more casual? I wouldn't say I'm watching everything, okay. um, but I'll pick and choose some good ones and obviously I'll watch all the USC games. Any teams in particular that you're, you're keeping an eye on or you mostly just honed in on the US? Honed in on the US, but I think obviously you have to keep your eyes on a team like Brazil or Argentina, so. Who should be the, the number one for the U.S. national team? <laughs> the number, oh, <laughs> I could easy answer, Turner, easy. Well, hopefully we're gonna see Matt wearing the number one shirt for the U.S. national team uh, this winter in Qatar. And you know, it's funny when you think back to when Matt Turner left the club in June, went to Arsenal, and you're thinking about losing the goalkeeper of the year, the reigning goalkeeper of the year, the best goalkeeper in Major League Soccer. And I think the assumption was no matter who came in, wouldn't there was going to be a downgrade yeah. at that position because, of course, it would be a downgrade at that position. And then George Petrovic came in and said, I, I got this. So uh, could you have ever imagined that a keeper would have come in and essentially replicated what Matt Turner did from day one? No, I think you said it perfectly. I think not that we wouldn't get a good goalkeeper. I just think the expectation to replicate where Turner was at the time. I, didn't, I don't think many people saw that being possible. But George has been incredible, super professional player, um, great kid. Um, and extremely motivated to, to do the best he can. And I, I know he's motivated to do bigger than New England. So, and that's, and that's the key, you know, I think to win at the club you're at, you have to strive for something even bigger than that, so.
You mentioned he's a great kid. He can seem so stoic on the field. He has like this Serbian seriousness about him, yeah. but you can see personality bubbling beneath the surface. What, what is that personality actually like? He, he jokes a little bit off the field, but um, on the field, like you said, he's just, he's a presence. He does, he's very serious. He wants to do the best he can for the team and for himself. And he's motivated. He, he, wants, to, he wants to be the best and that's, that's key. Yeah, and Georgia came in from day one and, and absolutely crushed it. But like you mentioned, this team dealt with some injuries, so it's not always the case. Unfortunately, guys like Dylan Barrero, Giacomo Verioni, who were brought in to be big parts of, parts of the attack, dealt with some injuries, weren't able to get on the field quite as much, weren't really able to get acclimated to the group as much as you would have liked. So when you think about the six weeks or so that you'll have for preseason in 2023, obviously there are gonna be some new faces you'll have to get acclimated. But how important is that time period gonna be for guys like Dylan Barrero and Giacomo Verioni to really kind of get them integrated with this group? Yeah, I think it's it's always key to have a full preseason under the belt, you know, um, being getting used to individual personalities or tendencies on the field is always is always difficult when you don't have a run of games. So um, we saw s bits and pieces from each of them. Uh, a little more Dylan obviously just played more games, but you know, I think when Giacomo comes into the team, I think we'll be able to understand him as a player more and he'll be able to play off us and we'll be able to play off him. And then finally, we'll just finish off with some optimism. What's got you excited about the 2023 season? Why should we be excited about this group in 2023? Because I'm extremely pissed off of 2022. I think that's the perfect answer. I appreciate it, Matt.